Welcome to the cutting edge of the global awakening. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence by the military-industrial complex. Well, it looks like the North Tower of the World Trade Center has just completely collapsed. The U.S. dollar's status as the preeminent reserve currency is under attack. This is a mathematical fact. Tens of trillions of dollars are being extracted from the United States of America. You really want the truth? Then just follow the money. Welcome to Follow the Money Radio, a broadcast dedicated to your personal, spiritual, and financial liberty. And now, here's your voice of reason in the midst of global chaos, economist and best-selling author, Jerry Robinson. Uh, greetings, friends. From the white-capped plains of the middle of America, my gosh, I'm sitting underneath five, six inches of ice and snow and we broadcast from the top of a mountain, and uh, it is completely covered with ice and snow. Beautiful view. <laughs> As I look out and I see uh, the amazing beauty of the snow and the ice, but we are completely under it. Thank God we did not lose our electricity. I know hundreds of thousands of people have this week uh, due to the ice and severe snowstorm that... Uh, crippled part of the nation. Now, when I spoke with Tom Cloud, Precious Metals Advisor here, he told me that he was playing golf in his shorts, 72 degrees down in St. Simons Island, Georgia. <laughs> Perhaps that explains the high real estate prices down there. But regardless, uh, I hope you're staying warm as this very bizarre uh, early snowstorm has uh, really impacted much of the nation. We have a lot to talk about. As I was listening to the intro to the show today, I was thinking about how if you want the truth, you just have to follow the money. And that's so true, you know, because the politicians jack their jaws, wag their tongues and say things. And then just within a period of a short time, you suddenly discover that they don't really mean what they're saying. And because you simply see what they're funding and what they're financing and what they're really promoting underneath. So it's so vital today to really approach politics as an atheist, not religion, not, not God, obviously. I'm not an atheist. But when it comes to politics, you almost have to be agnostic on the entire thing because there is so much garbage and PR and agendas and everyone is vying for your attention. They're vying for your vote. They're vying for your support. And I don't believe it's wise just to slap on a particular shirt or a brand or a letter like an R or a D and simply believe that that's really what you are because these things are so fluid and so dynamic and so changing that we do get emails uh, regularly from people who are hostile to our message. I still don't understand that, but we still do. We receive emails from people who think that we are uh, a Democratic outfit. Others think that we're re a Republican outfit. It's really comical because our goal here is not to promote any kind of political agenda. We said that from the very beginning, but still people think that because we may promote uh, a particular story or we may talk about something that it implies that somehow we are aligned with a particular you know, political philosophy. And that's just unfortunate because what we're here to do, friends, is to help you understand how to become a better investor, how to create multiple streams of income, and also how to pay attention to what's happening in the world as an informed citizen. You know, I think investors like you and I and and people who are striving to create income streams like you and I, uh, we need to have our finger on the pulse of what's happening around the world because this world is ever changing. And not only does it uh, keep us aware of the times, which is important, especially to the, those of you who are uh, believers in the Bible and take Jesus' words very seriously when he says, watch and be sober. But also, as a wise business person, it, it's very important to pay attention to the trends because many times you will receive signals. You will receive signals from the market telling you this or that type of trend is uh, you know, beginning or ending, allowing you to profit from it. 
You know, over the years, I've done so many different things to earn money. I remember whenever I was very young, I was uh, just about, I was probably about 19 or 20. Uh, I had a job. I was holding a full-time job, and I never was satisfied whenever I held a full-time job working for someone. I never was satisfied. I always thought to myself that this is great that I have a job. It's great that I am, you know, I'm blessed to have a job. I'm blessed to have uh, benefits and all of this, but what irked me was the fact that I knew that I would be able to go out and, and sustain my own self if I ever got the gumption, right, to get out there and really do it on my own. And so one of the very first things I did, and this was just out of sheer uh, desperation, was I went down to the hardware store. I picked up a couple of spray paint cans and some stencils and went out door to door after work in the evening time and knocked on doors and said, hey, I'll spray paint the numbers of your address on your curb and would charge about 10 to $15 to do that on both sides of the curb. And within just a handful of days, I noticed that I was beginning to make some really good money. And here's what I'm saying. So many times, in fact, we even see this today with the fast food workers striking. Uh, they're earning seven twenty-five an hour and demanding fifteen dollars an hour. I won't get into all that story, but you've probably seen that this week that fast food workers are striking because they want fifteen dollars an hour. Now, I'm not going to pass a moral judgment on that. I'm not going to get into that debate. I will tell you from an economic standpoint, from my viewpoint, that's silly. Uh, you only pay what the market will bear, and if you're if you force employers to pay $15 an hour, they're just going to cut half of the jobs. So they're going to end up paying the same thing. So it's kind of a silly argument and really an uninformed argument, I believe, to be demanding $15 an hour. Uh, but my point is, is that when we stop looking to corporations, when we stop looking to our corporate masters, so to speak, to provide all of our benefits, to provide all of our pay. We find it to be empowering. That's exactly what happened to me when it, so many years ago. Whenever I was working a job, I had a really great job and I was making good money, but I just could not get over the fact that I knew that I could go out there and do something on my own. And it would feel more satisfying. It would feel more gratifying. And so I did. And all it was was spray painting, you know, paint on on curbs and making, you know, a few bucks at the time. And even though I didn't make a whole lot of money doing it, it was so liberating to know that I could go out there and do it. Over time, I launched several different businesses. I had an appliance repair business, in fact, still do. And uh, launched, a, I had a laundromat for a period of time and did not really particularly care for that. You know, you, you always hear about these you know, laundromats, car washes, these cash businesses, vending businesses. I've, I was actually, actually had some vending machines at the laundromat, and that was actually a decent business. But the the laundromat in particular was kind of a rundown laundromat and because i had an appliance repair background i was able to you know fix anything or knew who to call in case i ever had a problem with the laundry machines but i've done rental real estate you know and just all different kinds of things looking for the right fit and early on fortunately i found trading was something that i could do that i could be very good at that it didn't require me to get out and sweat you know which not a bad thing necessarily but if you can find something that does not require too much of your uh, brawn, but more of your brain, and if that's something that you enjoy, then that's what you should do. And I, I enjoy trading, and so I did that. But you know what I really stumbled into that really blew my mind? It was whenever I stumbled into the Internet and Internet marketing. That was when I really got excited because Internet marketing is very challenging. It's a, it's a challenging endeavor. You're up against many different people trying to rank on Google, trying to get on the first page of Google. And I spent a lot of time and a lot of uh, money learning, not through, you know, not through a uh, uh, $1,000 type of uh, programs, but instead just lots of books. I would buy lots of books, watch lots of videos, and I was self-taught. I learned Internet marketing, and I took my appliance repair company and took it to the very top of the, uh, the first page of Google in the city that I was in. And uh, it's been very, very good. In fact, you know, in the old days... You had to be in the phone book. I remember phone book ads costing thousands and thousands of dollars. And today, you know, if you are on the first page of Google 
it's almost like a full page ad in the yellow pages back in the old days. So, you know, and it's much cheaper if you know what you're doing. Uh, you don't have to spend the thousands and thousands of dollars. Now, there's a lot of guys out there who will charge you that. You know, there's people out there who will charge you lots of money. And I know many of them are, are good, but some of it's kind of voodoo. You know, you never really know whether it's going to work or not. And so that's why we urge people to, to learn on their own. But anyway, Internet marketing. Uh, we're going to be getting into that in our income university later on down the road, uh, coming up at the beginning of the year. And uh, for all of our FTM insiders, you'll be receiving those uh, teachings. But we're going to be talking about Internet marketing coming up, and I'm very excited. And I was just lo looking at the numbers coming out from Cyber Monday, the biggest ever, $1.7 billion, uh, up 18% from last year, uh, the biggest, the largest spend on any one day in history on the internet was this Cyber Monday, 2013. And more people today than ever are now using their mobile phones to make purchases online. So we're living in a very different era, very different era than it was even just a few years ago. And it's constantly evolving and constantly changing. And these are the things that smart investors, savvy investors, smart uh, business owners, and just watchful people, you know, uh, would do well to pay attention to because we are in a very volatile time as our age is evolving from technology to technology. Uh, but, you know, in this upcoming Income University on uh, Internet Marketing, I'm going to share with you how I paid much of my way through college with Amazon.com. Uh, since then, we have we run about 60 different websites, 60 different websites. Uh, these other websites, you would never know uh, that it was me that owned them uh, because there's nothing about me on the page and nothing about any of us. Instead, it's just uh, a service or, or product or an affiliate type of setup. And this is beautiful. Um, you don't have to start an Internet company that makes millions and millions and millions of dollars to succeed online or to create a great income on the side. Many of you who are working full-time jobs and you're saying, Jerry, I'd love to start an online business or I'd love to start a side business of some sort because I'm like you. I I feel that I just need to be, I need to get some satisfaction here. You know, I'm working for somebody else and it feels good and I like my job, but, but it's that little thing that just kind of bothers you. I really want to know that I can go out and do this on my own if I ever need to. And I think it's a very important skill to learn. Jennifer always jokes that, you know, she could uh, drop me off on any city in America. <laughs> Not that she would, but uh, she, my wife, I'm talking about for those of you who are new, uh, she could drop me off in any city and I could, you know, make money. And she's right. Because once you learn how to do it, once you learn how to make money, once you learn that skill, then you don't need to fill out a job application to pay your bills. Instead, you just have to apply the principles that you already know. And that's what we're going to be teaching uh, in this upcoming, uh, these upcoming sessions in the Income University is how to do that. And with online, with Internet, it's, it's unbelievably simplified. Not easy, right? It's not easy. I'm not trying to say uh, I'm, I, I despise those who come on the infomercials and talk about how you know, you'll be making so much money sipping Mai Tais on the, the beach if you use their system. You know, just pay them, you know, four easy mo monthly payments of only thirty nine ninety five free shipping. But you know that doesn't work, right? It, they're not going to give you what really, really, really works. In fact, what they're doing is, is they're selling you things, and that's how they're making their money, right? So you want to learn from somebody who actually does it, right? You want to learn from somebody who actually does what they're preaching, and that's why I'm so excited about what we're putting out. So there'll be lots more coming out about that. But uh, if you're not an FTM insider, you're going to be missing out. I just got to tell you, um, we we don't do what we do here at FTM Daily uh, for the money necessarily because we have already created, as I mentioned, 60 different websites. Now, listen to me. This is a really important thing. So I was moving towards this earlier, and I, I sidestepped it. And that is that with uh, in the internet, you do not need one website making millions and millions and millions of dollars to succeed. You can set up small, little, miniature websites. Very simple to do. In fact, in many ways, free. Uh, we'll even show you how to set up your own website for free. 
you still have to pay for, for hosting and whatnot. But all of this we're going to teach. And here's the thing. What if you have, like we do, 60 different websites? See, Jerry, that takes forever. How do you manage all that? You would not believe how simplistic you can make online business. You really have to see it to believe it. What if you could have 5, 10, 15 different little websites out there driving you money on a monthly basis? What if you're only making $50 from each website and you had 10 of them? There's $500 every single month coming in. And now you have diversified, in some ways, your income. Now, not everybody is going to want to do online business, and I get that. But for those of you who are looking, scratching your head saying, I want to start a business, I would urge you not to focus on the brick and mortars stuff. We are moving towards an online world. Learn, uh, learn about mobile applications. Focus on the cloud. Understand web design. Understand programming. You can learn almost all of that for free. Online, there's a great website called codeacademy.com. I'm actually learning right now PHP and CSS. I know, I know CSS for the most part, but I'm doing a refresher course. I already learned HTML and all of this. But these are languages of the web, and they're increasingly the language of business. So, you know, those are things that you can do for free to improve your abilities and skills. And it takes a little bit of time. You got to turn off the TV. You got to turn off the boob tube, you know, and commit yourself to improving. Yeah, there's a few more things I want to say as well. We're going to do that on, on the other side of this break. I'm going to uh, come back. I want to talk a little bit about Bitcoin. We stirred up the pot last show and talked about that when I had Trace Meyer on. I'm going to give you a little bit more detail about Bitcoin. Plus, we're going to talk about um, what stocks a little bit, talk about what happened in the markets, and then we'll bring on Tom Cloud, Jay Peroni. Jennifer Robinson will be here with the Trigger Trade Report. All of that and more straight ahead. Hold tight. We'll be back in two minutes. Friends, it's no secret that the U.S. economy is in dire straits. But you don't have to watch this unfold in fear. You can protect yourself and your family with Jerry Robinson's best-selling book, now in audiobook format. Get the complete, unabridged, and revised version of Bankruptcy of Our Nation by Jerry Robinson, available in a brand new audiobook. We have had numerous emails pour in from listeners just like you, requesting Jerry's book in audio. Whether you want to listen in the car, at the gym, or on your iPad, we've now got you covered. Get the entire book for only $24.95. That's right, over 12 hours of Jerry Robinson's economic and financial education and practical strategies for only $24.95. Inside the audiobook, you'll hear 21 income streams you can create both now and in retirement, specific ways to inflation-proof your investment portfolio using our PACE philosophy, and the five levels of financial freedom that Jerry has personally used to build true wealth. Friends, you cannot afford to miss out on this information. Get Jerry Robinson's brand new audiobook, Bankruptcy of Our Nation, right now at ftmdaily.com forward slash bankruptcy. That's ftmdaily.com forward slash bankruptcy. Hi, friends. Jerry Robinson here. Many of you know that I have been running several successful online businesses for years. And one of the things that I like about doing business online is that it's cheap. In fact, anyone can get started simply by purchasing a domain name and a web hosting plan. But how exactly do you get started? Well, just go where I go. DirtCheapWebHosting.net. That's right. DirtCheapWebHosting.net. It does not matter what you're looking for because they have it all. Domain names as low as one dollar and 99 cents web hosting plans as low as three dollars and 99 cents per month and you can even start your own online store for as little as nine dollars and 99 cents per month and if you need help building your own website just use their free design wizard and you can be up and running in no time with your very own beautifully designed website friends it's time to get online start a blog start an online business start something log on now to dirtcheapwebhosting.net and get your own website set up right now for just a few dollars per month. Dirtcheapwebhosting.net. Everything you need to get started online, only cheaper.
Well, I must have really uh, ruffled some feathers last show, last podcast, when I talked about Bitcoin, the idea uh, of Bitcoin being this new digital currency that is taking the web by storm and even the world finance by storm, uh, now over $1,000 per Bitcoin. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, you can go back and listen to that show, the last show we did. I think it was called A Beginner's Guide to Bitcoin. But we got a lot of emails from people saying, Jerry, what are you talking about? Why are you promoting Bitcoin? Why do you think that it's good? Why why aren't you talking about gold instead? Well, I want to give you a really brief summation of my view, because I probably didn't do that effectively last time, because I let Trace Meyer do most of the talking. But let me just give you real briefly my take on Bitcoin. That is, Bitcoin is not the solution to our monetary crisis by any means, any stretch of the imagination. However, while it's not a solution, it is a great indicator that there is a problem. Just as gold rising for the last 12 years uh, is an indication that there is trouble in the economy. It's not a bubble. Gold prices are not a bubble. The bubble is not deflating. Gold is not going down because it was in a bubble. Silver is not in a bubble. These monetary metals go up in contrast to failing economic policy. They are the beneficiaries of poor monetary policy. So when they go up, it's because monetary policy is bad. Now, here's my case to you about Bitcoin. Do I think that you should run out and put your life savings in Bitcoin? Heavens, no. Whatever you do, do not do that. However, do I think that you should actually go through the process of purchasing a small amount of Bitcoin? Yes. Why? Why would I say that? If I don't think you should put your life savings in it, why would I say you should even bother with it in the first place? Well, because this is a new era that we're in. And it's important for you as a savvy investor, as a business owner, as someone who's paying attention to the trends, to understand how this works. I think Trace Meyer really did a good job last program. And when he said that in 1992... There were people who were saying that email was a dumb idea, right? Who's going to send an email back in 1992? You know, I'm going to use the Postal Service. Nobody wants to get an electronic piece of mail. Nobody's going to do business that way. Well, fast forward now 20 years, and, you know, who still sends a paper letter, right? I mean, it's very rare. You send a card. But overall, most business and personal dealings are handled online. Well, this is exactly what Bitcoin is, it, what email was to postal mail. Bitcoin is to money moving around on the Internet. You can despise it. You can be suspicious of it. You can be angry about it. You can deny it. You can say that it doesn't exist. You can say that it's not right. You can say that it's manipulated. But it's here. And I would argue that it's here to stay, good or bad. And therefore, it's important for you to understand it. You don't have to necessarily embrace it and think that it's the best thing since life spread. I don't. I don't think that it's the best. I think there's better ways to do things. I think Bitcoin uh, can be manipulated, despite what they say, how it's safe and anonymous and all this. Well, who made it? Right. This is what I've said before. Who made Bitcoin? Uh, some guy. We don't know who he is. Sure. Sure. That's right. Yeah, it's just some... some uh, altruistic guy who said, I'm going to create this system. And uh, I don't know. What if it was J.P. Morgan? Right? What if it was the Federal Reserve? What if this is a grand wealth confiscation scam? You talk about a bail-in. My goodness, put everybody puts all their money in this, and then poof, it goes away. And who do you blame? I don't know, because it's anonymous. Who are you supposed to blame if it's anonymous? We don't know who created it. We don't know where the money went. We don't know. I don't know. See, I'm very suspicious about Bitcoin from that respect, so I'm not going to put all my money in it. Nevertheless, have you tried to get Bitcoin? Have you ever went out and tried to get one? I did. I have. And I tell you that it's a learning experience. It really is. It's a process. And I think that understanding that process, at least being familiar with that process, is an important step for you. So... I would urge everyone to take 20 or 30 or 40 bucks and toss it at Bitcoin, not because Bitcoin is going to go to the moon, but instead 
so that you can actually understand what's happening. You can actually see how this process works. It's very important, I think, for us to grasp what's happening right now. Now, there was a currency that I talked about also on the last program called Ripple. It's the second largest cryptocurrency in the world. Behind it is Litecoin. Litecoin has been receiving quite a bit of uh, exposure lately, but Ripple was one that it was less than a penny. And I was talking about it and saying Ripple is one to pay attention to if you missed the Bitcoin rally and you want to go out and you want to toss 20 or 30 bucks on something. Try Ripple. Now, Ripple is pretty tough to buy because it's still in its infancy. It's still in beta. But it was trading for less than a penny per Ripple. And that's the name of the currency, Ripple. Whenever I suggested it. It's at six cents now. That's a, what is that? I don't even know the percentage on that. Was it 600%? That's a huge spike in two weeks. So this is what I'm talking about here. Uh, so you could have taken 20 or 30 bucks and tossed it into Ripple get a learning experience on how the whole thing works, and then two weeks later, your 20 bucks is worth 120 bucks, right? So, but I still think that Ripple is going to go much, 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 much higher. And I'm not betting on that. I'm not going to invest heavily in that because I think they're all going to be prone to boom and bust type of cycles. But I think it's important for you to understand how these things work because they're not going away they're not going away whether we like it or not so you don't have to like it you don't have to believe and agree with it but i do think that you should at least understand it and even you know take 20 or 30 bucks out of your wallet and toss it towards these cryptocurrencies and see how they work see how they operate and uh see how the whole thing works because it's uh it's coming we're going to see more stuff like this. We're going to see more stuff like this. And i got to tell you, I have some very negative thoughts on some of these currencies, these cryptocurrencies. But I'm going to keep a lot of those to myself for now. I'm going to keep my mouth shut because I'm going to watch and see if what I'm thinking is actually going to materialize. I don't want to make any bogus forecasts. We've done a very good job on this program of saying things that have come to pass. Right, we we told you the euro was not going to collapse when everybody else was telling you that the euro was going to collapse. Oh, the euro is going to collapse. Europe's going under. Nice try, nice try to get the spotlight off of the U.S. You didn't. It didn't work. Right, the U.S. is still the greatest debtor nation in world history, no matter what's happening in Europe. We told you that gold and silver were going to go up. We told you that uh, natural gas was going to go up. We um, we we've we've made numerous forecasts on this program, and I'm telling you that these cryptocurrencies are here to stay. I will tell you that much. What I do not know is what their real purpose and end goal is. And that's what I'm keeping my mouth shut about because I'm doing a lot of research on that right now, and I plan on coming out with a report on it later. I've got my eyes on this, but I think it's very important for you to understand it, to embrace it enough to allow yourself to expose 20 or 30 U.S. dollars that are going down in value anyway and to put them in some of these cryptocurrencies to see how this whole thing operates. It's very geeky. It's a very nerdy type of process. If you're not a computer nerd, you're going to be like me and you're going to be, your eyes are going to be crossed as you're trying to do this. It took me forever to buy those Ripple. And uh, it took me a while to buy Bitcoin because I just, it was so difficult. It's gotten a little bit easier over the years, but I think it's something that you should investigate. So there, I've said it. Now, let's also talk about this. What about the Bitcoin bubble? Is it going to pop? Well, yeah, of course. I think anything that goes up goes down. But here's the thing to keep in mind is that what we're seeing with Bitcoin, this massive amount of people who are trying to get Bitcoin and driving the price up and buying more and believing the story, why are they doing this? They're doing this because they know that the dollar itself is in trouble. They know that central banking is bad. In fact, that's exactly what the founder of Bitcoin, or whoever this person was, whoever the group was, they were saying that it's decentralized. There is no central bank that issues Bitcoin. And therefore, since there's no central bank, you're not prone to all of the excesses and problems that come with central banking. So people are waking up to gold and silver through Bitcoin. And I don't particularly care how they wake up to gold and silver. They're waking up right now and realizing that there's a problem. 
with uh, the currency, and they need to figure out an alternative. And I think whenever the Bitcoin whole thing gets popped and exposed or whatever's going on with that whole thing, what you've created are all of these people with this pent-up demand for something that's an alternative to the dollar. And lo and behold, here's silver at $19 an ounce. Here is gold at 1200 and some odd dollars an ounce. And they're going to drive these asset prices up. Because once Bitcoin fails, which it will, it will, then they're going to move towards gold and silver. The two monetary metals that have never failed throughout history. I mean, Bitcoin is even, it's almost exactly like gold and silver. It's almost trying to mimic it by the fact that you have to mine the Bitcoin, just like you mine gold and silver. Uh, there's a limited amount of Bitcoin, just like there's a limited amount, a finite amount of gold and silver. So it's really just a play on the fears over the currency. So I'm glad to see people buying Bitcoin because what it tells me is, is that they want something besides the dollar. They just don't realize that what they're wanting is already there. It's gold and silver. So they're going to rush that way. Gold and silver will be the beneficiaries of all this madness. So don't be dismayed by the Bitcoin rush. Those guys are coming for gold and silver after this thing crashes. They're looking for safety from the U.S. dollar, and we know where it is. It's in gold and in silver. may not feel like it right now with prices the way that they are, but mark my words, gold and silver will be the beneficiaries of this madness. We are going to see an absolute total collapse crash of this global economy. This thing is on borrowed time. We're operating on borrowed time. Don't get confused about what's happening. Gold and silver will be the beneficiaries of all of this madness. Whenever people have their backs up against the wall and the dollar is falling, people are inherently, they inherently know that they have to move towards gold and silver. It's ingrained in them throughout history. So with all that, let's head in now to our precious metals market update with our good friend, Tom Clapp. Follow the Money Weekly presents your precious metals market update. Here's Tom Cloud. The markets, as you all know, have been going down, and we're hoping for a bottom sometime this week or in the next two weeks as the shorts expire in two weeks on the 19th. So there's still danger. But so far, gold has been able to hold above 1,200 and silver above 19, uh, even though on Wednesday it did go down to 19 uh, briefly, and and gold went down to 12.06 briefly, but both of them bounced back as I record this. But we could continue to see weakness in the market uh, for another couple of weeks. I don't see a whole lot of downside risk, but I don't see it ready to break out to the upside yet. But I do want to reiterate two things today. I won't take a lot of time because there's not a lot going on. But number one, when you have been hearing all week that on Friday they're going to tell you there's over 200,000 jobs were created in November, we've already seen that these numbers are not right, and then they'll talk about tapering again. And for some reason the public thinks when you cut uh, QE from $85 billion a month to $75 billion, that is something significant, which it's not at all, and uh, I highly doubt they'll do it. This be the sixth month they said they were going to taper, and we'll see if they finally do. But that's one thing that's hurt gold is saying the economy is strong when it's not and leading people to believe that things are getting better where they'll spend more money and run up more debt. Uh, number two, as I said, it's very important to see if the shorts get out in two weeks or whether they roll over and stay short on the silver market, it's hard to imagine staying short uh, when the cost is below mining cost in most mines in the world. So we'll just have to watch that and see what happens the next two weeks. But the two things I want to mention in the end is the palladium is held, just like we said last week. It looks like it is very close to uh, breaking out. And once again, the shortage of palladium, physical palladium, is very short, and with any kind of demand from the, the new car, with eight new car factories in China in the last 18 months, we're going to see a big demand for 
Palladium. And as we've talked about many times, with the mining problems in Siberia and Russia, the mines being closed uh, currently the next spring, and the only place producing palladium is South Africa with a lot of labor problems. So we look for palladium to break out, and it has been the top performing metal for last year and this year, uh, and, and we think it could easily be next year. So for the ones of you don't have palladium, I strongly urge you to get some. And then lastly, the biggest news to bring to you today is the big meeting, gold meetings going on in China this week, the first three days. Today's the last day of it, and I've been in close contact with uh, what's going on there. But it seems uh, evident and apparent through the announcements that the China Mint is going to go into commercial industrial business. This is huge huge for us because today you can't buy 100 ounce gold bars and 400 ounce gold bars in the United States. Strictly a big boy fraternity where uh, unless you're a central bank or a big industrial user, you're not going to be clear to get these 400 and 100 ounce bars. But now the China Mint uh, realized the importance of the future and they, as early as the first quarter, will be selling uh, 100 ounce and 400 ounce commercial gold bars in addition to the kilo 32.15. Where today, when you buy from us, we can sell you fractional gold, one quarter ounce, one tenth ounce, one half ounce, one ounce, ten ounce. And the biggest we can sell you is the kilo, the 32.15 ounce. But this is going to be very, very significant. Uh, uh, for the gold market next year in China, please, in the future where we don't and realize how important it is to make that available because a lot of accounts will buy it and leave it in China for storage um, or they'll have it moved to a major, major depository in Europe. So this is very, very exciting news that has broken in China that uh, I haven't even seen it in writing yet. This came straight. Uh, from someone at the meeting that I talked to uh, on Tuesday. So hopefully uh, this is going to be, 2014 is going to be a very good bounce back. It reminds me of 2008 when silver went down 22%, and then it bounced back and went up 92% the next year in one year. I'm not saying it'll do that much, but certainly uh, at this price, there is very little risk in silver and gold, but to wait to see if it's moving for the ones that want to be sure it's moving before they get back in, watch gold when it gets back over 1250 and and silver gets back over $20 and a quarter, that will, we think, will launch it uh, uh, back into uh, much higher numbers. So I hope this has been helpful, and uh, if you need to contact me directly, you can reach me at 800 800- Two four seven two eight one two. That's eight hundred two four seven two eight one two. And if you're not on our email distribution list, you can go to ftmdaily.com and hit the precious metals button and sign up. And it is completely confidential, but we send out two or three emails a week on market conditions, specials, and things going on in the precious metals world. For this week's. Precious Metals Market Update. This is Tom Cloud signing out. Hey friends, this is Jerry Robinson from Follow the Money Weekly. Recently, we have been receiving many emails from our listeners commenting on the great help they're getting from our precious metals expert, Tom Cloud. Gold and silver are excellent hedges against the growing threat of coming U.S. inflation. Who's your gold guy? Make it Tom Cloud. With over 30 years' experience with precious metals, Tom will answer all of your questions. Don't buy your gold and silver through some call center and pay inflated prices. Call my good friend Tom Cloud and speak directly with him and get all of your questions answered. For a limited time, Tom is offering free shipping and insurance on every gold and silver purchase made by our listeners. Call 800 247 
2812. And when you do, tell him that Jerry Robinson from Follow the Money Weekly sent you. And he'll throw in that free shipping and insurance on your entire order. Call your gold guy, Tom Cloud, right now for the very best deals on gold and silver coins. 800-247-2812. That is 800-247-2812. With this week's Trigger Trade Report, I'm Jennifer Robinson. Well, we had a lot of activity in our Trigger Trading portfolio this week as we sold out of six positions, including ticker symbol KORS, which was up 5.68%, ticker symbol GMED for a 7% profit, ticker symbol SSNC for an 8% profit, and ticker symbol SQI for nearly 10% profit. We also have eight trades still in play in the markets, including ticker symbol CELG, which is currently up 7% for us, ticker symbol SLM, which is flat from its trigger price, and ticker symbol BR, which is up 5.5%. We also set new stop loss orders, both for ticker symbol CELG and BR, in order to lock in some of our gains. Five trades are still awaiting Jerry's trigger price. Trigger Trading is a service we offer all of our FTM insiders in which they receive Jerry Robinson's trade of the day every single day of the week, and he provides a trigger price, stop loss price, commentaries, and daily status updates. If you'd like to learn more about Trigger Trading, visit us at ftmdaily.com forward slash trigger trade. That's ftmdaily.com forward slash trigger trade. Jay Peroni, Certified Financial Planner, here with the idea of the week. This week, we'll take a look at a fiber optic stock that could double over the next 12 months. I love small, lesser followed companies, those that have outstanding upside potential that few investors know about. Our Tomorrow's Treasures portfolio is all about finding tomorrow's leading companies today. One area that I'm all over is fiber optics. Fiber optics is a go-to material for wiring especially when it comes to network cables. This material offers three key ingredients, flexibility, strength, and most of all, durability. The center of a fiber optic cable is simply the networking cables that provide the connection. The next layer is a strong, thick PVC encasing. Next, a strain relief material called aramid fibers covers the PVC component. Then the outer shell is usually made of PVC and provides extra protection and flexibility to the cable. This is a rapidly growing sector and should continue to provide amazing growth over the years ahead. One way I'm playing this trend is with a small company few investors know about. The company I'm referring to is Clearfield Incorporated. The ticker symbol is CLFD. Again, that's CLFD. It designs and manufactures Field Smart Fiber Management Platform which includes its latest generation fiber distribution system and fiber scalability center. Its product line supports a wide range of panel configurations, densities, connectors, and adapter options, and is offered alongside an assortment of passive optical components. Clearfield also provides a complete line of fiber and copper assemblies for controlled and outside plan environments. My price target on this one is $35 a share, which represents almost a 100% gain from its current levels. My five-point stock inspection on Clearfield shows that it has positive financial strength, an attractive valuation, buy up to $20 a share. It has positive momentum. It also has a positive risk to reward. And its earnings trend has also been positive, scoring a five out of five. The bottom line on Clearfield, this is a thinner traded stock. It's a small cap company, so you have to be aware that it can be volatile. However, for a portion of your portfolio, there may be a good risk or reward here that could double your money over the next 12 to 18 months. It's a good buy up to $20 a share and could hit as high as $35 over the next year. Again, it's Clearfield Incorporated, ticker symbol CLFD. This is Jay Peroni, Certified Financial Planner, signing off for the idea of the week. We'll see you again next week. All right. Well, Jay Peroni is a CFP, Certified Financial Planner a member of our Christian Financial Advisor Network, and he also manages our very own PACE investment portfolio. If you would like to have a free 30-minute review of your investments with Jay, 
you can call him at 888-664-6963. That's 888-664-6963. And when you do, be sure to tell him you heard about him on Follow the Money Weekly Radio. Well, friends, that brings us to the end of our program. Thank you so much for choosing to allow me into your life each and every week. It is an honor and a privilege to be a part of yours as well. And as always, I leave you with this final word, this time spoken by Jesus Christ, found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 31 through 33, where he says, Do not worry, then, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? The Gentiles eagerly seek all of these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. There are some words to really meditate on and think about this week. Remember, friends, when you want the truth about the global economy, just follow the money. Have a safe and prosperous week, and I'll see you right back here next weekend. God bless. All of the information contained on Follow the Money Weekly Radio is strictly for informational and educational purposes. The views and opinions of all guests, including our sponsors Tom Cloud and Jay Peroni, are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of Jerry Robinson, FTMDaily.com, and or Robinson Media Group, LLC. Jerry and Jennifer Robinson do hold their insurance licenses and may offer consulting on life insurance and fixed retirement income products. Remember, never do your financial planning through podcast or by radio. It's your money. Be wise. Do your due diligence and always consult a trusted financial professional before making any financial decisions.